Okay, Derbyites, I want you to meet two of our users who we all aspire to be, and that is number one when it comes to all the predictions at Gold Derby. And I mean beating the experts. I mean beating the editors. The nerve they have, right? And first up here is Bryce. I'm going to mispronounce your last name, Bryce. Give me your last name. Hartvigson. Hartvigson, who got 83% for the Critics' Choice Awards. And meet Jonathan, is it Queso? Yeah. Okay, who got 86%. With Bryce got 83, you got 86% doing the Golden Globes. Now, since the camera is on you, Jonathan, how did you know? Spill the beans. Oh, gosh. Um, I mostly was, I was telling Bryce before that it was kind of just luck. Um, it was uh, a mixture of perusing the various sites that I frequent, like Awards, da Awards Daily and Gold Derby and In Contention and things like that, and just sort of calling what they were saying and then adding my own intuition, just whatever I felt like was in the heat of the moment. Mm -hmm. so. And uh, what was your, I don't have your predictions in front of me. I'm, I should have been able to pull those up before this. What was your what long shot are you really proud of that you nailed? Um, I guess the one that I, I picked that I was kind of proud of was the comedy musical actress category where everyone was kind of... It seemed like everyone was kind of expecting the Golden Globes to go very... Um, mainstream and pick Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy for the heat, but I did uh, Julie Delpy and Greta Gerwig, and so I was really proud that they uh -huh. both got in, because I thought maybe one of them could, but that both of them did, and I predict both of them was really awesome to see. Wow. Okay, you're next here, Bryce. What were your secrets? What, were, what long shots did you call that, were, that you're especially proud of? Okay, it wasn't, it wasn't exactly a long shot, but I did my homework, <laughs> and I looked at all the comedy picture nominees for Critics' Choice from the past few years, they do, They never have dramas. So that eliminated, you know, Nebraska and her and Inside Lewin Davis immediately. And then I figured that, you know, enough said, the heat, this is the end, are all pretty solid there. And I put my 500-point bet on it, and I was right. Oh, excellent. Uh, give, give me some more examples, because uh, your 83% is pretty impressive. Um, I was pretty happy with getting Dallas Buyers Club for picture after the SAG ensemble, I figured it would. Um, like a, a novice. Um, and I was putting hope on the Wolf of Wall Street getting a lot of recognition by the Globes, but uh, just previous to the actual nominations, I'd read that, and read and been hearing in podcasts that like uh, the HFPA wasn't exactly sold on the movie, so I was starting to get nervous, but I, I kept with it, and I kind of wish that I hadn't. So I, I had put my 200 points bet on the screenplay category, hoping that it would still be in, and neither it nor Blue Jasmine actually made it, so I was a little bit kicking myself about that one. So uh, keep chatting, Jonathan. What have we learned over the last week about the Oscars? Um, I think as, well, as Robert first Redford in, learned... for example, there's some questions. Oprah and and Redford had fallen out there at uh, Oprah fell right. out of the Globes. Redford at SAG. Are they in? I, well, I think they're still in. I don't think that. I think um, specifically in the case of Redford, I think he's kind of on the fence. But I think the SAG nom, or sorry, he wasn't nominated for SAG. Um, I think the Globe nom and the Critics Choice nom for him sort of keep him in the loop. But I think, um, there, I mean, it's certainly not guaranteed for him the way it used to be. Um, and Oprah, I think, it was shocking, but the Globes, I don't think, have as much of an over... They don't have an overlap at all with the Oscars. They're just sort of a journalist organization. So I think it's better to look at the SAG nominations in that case where she was included. And I, I do think that she'll still be included when the Oscar nominations are announced. But, I mean, it definitely... The thing that both of them proved to me this week is that there, it is a very sort of open and very fluid year. There's a lot of potential nominees, a lot of room for people to surprise. I mean, uh, a week ago, people were sort of talking about Leonardo DiCaprio trying to take a spot from one of the five best actor contenders, and it's still very likely that he could. It's also very likely for, I mean, Forrest Whitaker after uh, his SAG support getting in. So I think 
it's there's there's a lot of opportunities, and I mean the surprise nom for Sally Hawkins too is really a good sign for Blue Jasmine. I don't know if it necessarily translates to a nomination because she was overlooked by SAG, but I I think the week proved that there's a lot of movement and that people. I don't I don't know if there's anyone necessarily set in stone except for a couple people at the top. Now it may vary. By the way, that Oprah didn't get in because she didn't do an HFBA press conference or something. There's often some petty agenda behind the Globe nomination. I did not investigate this. I shouldn't say it uh, because but sometimes that is the case. I remember the year of Desperate Housewives, for example, and uh, Eva Longoria was it who didn't go to the press conference. They were unforgiving. They nominated every one of the housewives except her. And, they, and when I did in, inquire from within, you know, what was going on, they said, "Ah, oh, she didn't jump our press pass." <laughs> and sure enough, that was it. Uh, yeah, it over was to you. I, well, I just want to say, I think it was shocking that, of all people, Oprah was the one that was knocked out for the supporting actress race because, I mean, there's all the, there's always talk about the HFPA being sort of a, a star, an organization that just wants as many stars as possible at their dinner and all that stuff. Um, and, I mean, a star like Oprah to not really invite her as a nominee is kind of shocking. So Now, Bryce, uh, Paul Sheen, our executive editor in the, in the chat room, the chat room's hopping, by the way. There are a lot of people <laughs> who want to see you guys. There is a lot of curiosity going on here. And what it is, uh, two things Paul brings up. One is uh, I want you to discuss the – they're all fascinated by your discussion of placing your bets for 200 and 500. And you know how you think that through just when doing Gold Derby. And second of all, Paul's other question is: Are we underestimating the Butler moving forward into the Oscars? And let me answer that for you. I think yes is the answer, because for a lot of reasons. But you you give me your answers first on both of those. Okay, I you actually sort of your voice went robotic, and I didn't quite hear that that question. Uh, all right, number all right, first question: Are we underestimating? the butler heading into the Oscars. Underestimating. In other words, it didn't do well at uh, the Globes or a Critics' Choice, but it did very well at SAG. So should we... Okay. Um, where do you stand on the butler? I I was, you know, thinking that the butler would get in earlier um, this year, but, you know, people keep talking about how crowded a year it is, and the butler, you know, while it did make like a hundred million or something ridiculous and it does have Harvey Weinstein and it does have Oprah. I just I, I can't quite see the passion coming through for that, especially when you've got, you know, another twelve movies that are arguably in front of it. So I think it's kinda dead. Um, and you know, while the Globes I, I know they didn't like the butler and you know the Oprah thing is kinda shocking because, you know, I mean she's a big star and if you know I mean there are only ninety members. If they don't like the movie, but they really want Oprah. They could have voted for Oprah. But I think the fact they didn't vote for Oprah shows that maybe they're not as impressed with her performance, because, I mean, after all, all she does in the movie is talk about Jack Kennedy's shoes and then die. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I don't think Oprah's that strong. It's not like it's going to get nominations elsewhere, except maybe, you know, song or costume design. And those are, you know, Costume design is certainly a long shot. I just don't see where the passion comes from, unless if they all owe, you know, the 20,000 people that were in that movie, you know, favors, you know, maybe. But <laughs> it would have to be, like, a year of 10, and even then it would be 10. So, no, it's dead. Right. Okay, you are so wrong wow. on all those counts. But uh, the, uh, the <laughs> second question was, uh, and I'll tell you why in a second, the, uh, the second question is, Placing bets, your 200 and 500 point bets, because you both tied for winners, but you emerged victorious because you had the highest point score. And this matters a lot at Gold Derby. You have to know, you know, to pay attention to this uh, fantasy sports element of this site that we have. And both of you guys did it. You did it strategically, and you broke through the ties and emerged the winner. So sticking with you for a second, Bryce, uh, what is your strategy when it comes to placing those Three super bets, one for 500 points, two for 200. Okay. Um, I think I brought this up earlier, but uh, for the 500 point, I went with comedy film for Critics' Choice because I looked at the past history, and I saw that they never, ever go for dramas in their comedy category. 
So I knew inside Lewin Davis, Nebraska and her were probably not getting in there. And then I went with Enough Said, The Heat, and This Is The End, because those are kind of the big comedies to come out this year. And those all had, you know, one, you know, 100 to 1 chances. So that seemed like an obvious choice. Um, basically, whenever there's a 100 to 1 chance that I feel really confident in, that's where I splurge with points. Oh, okay. And, and what about you, Jonathan? It's kind of the same for me. It's it's not so much the 100 and 1 chance. It's more... Um, I look at the category where I'm kind of predicting someone who's really outside of the norm. So for me, the 500 points bet was on uh, comedy musical actress, and I just I just looked at that category and I had two people that were not necessarily uh, that were two people that were trading back and forth as possible fifth slot nominees and a lot of other people's predictions, and I had them both in there, so I just went with the 500 there. I mean, I, I put my 200 bet on the screenplay category, and I didn't come out so victorious in that one. But uh, it, I think it's more just sort of a strategy of where I think the most opportunity is to to gain from it than and to lose from it. Obviously, if I, I'm wrong, but gain from it if I'm right. <laughs> Here's where you're both wrong about the Butler. Let me explain <laughs> something that they may not know. Well, I want to point out that I don't mix. think it's dead. <laughs> Oh, good. I'll finish that thought then. All right, let's well, teach Bryce a lesson here. I don't know, maybe <laughs> dangerous. He could use this information bad. to beat you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I think that The Butler, I mean, it's certainly not... Uh, I don't think it's the top of everyone's list, but I think the support from the actors uh, for both Forrest Whitaker and Oprah and um, the ensemble nomination shows that there's a group of 1,000-plus people who our members of the Academy and really support that movie. Yes, it may not uh, go all the way with everyone in the, a lot of the tech categories, but I think there's there's definitely some people who are really passionately supporting the movie if you look at uh, nominations throughout guilds and uh, various critics' organizations throughout the country. So that's my take on that. Let me... Uh explain something that's new to the race that you may not be sensitive to because you're not here on the ground in Hollywood, and that is two years ago the Oscar um, rules changed. And for the first time ever, you were allowed, if you're Harvey Weinstein, let's pick on him for a moment, you were allowed now to <laughs> campaign to voters directly. You're allowed to say, come to the Chateau Marmont Thursday night. We're going to feed you. We're going to get you drunk. We're, we may show the movie. Uh, you know, This is all well, new. But so... What's happening now is that there's this secret, uh, uh, what used to be secret Oscar parties that went on all the time are now right out in the open. And Harvey's not inviting me to the parties or you or any <laughs> journalists to the party. So there are a lot of these things going on that we just don't know about. Now, I, I have been to a number of these parties. I do get invited to some of them. But matter of fact, there was one last night for Sandra Bullock and the Gravity Gang. But, um, and I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I was across town too late. But the point is that they're, they're now going on, they're now legal, and, and uh, they're, they're a force. So uh, Harvey takes, doesn't take no for an answer at all, of course. At his Christmas yeah. party three weeks ago where I was at, he even had Taylor Swift there. He had Jane Fonda there. I mean, he had you know everybody there. And um, uh, it was very, very impressive. So he's pouring on that, that same kind of star water. So, so you're not necessarily familiar with yeah. those kind of elements. Um, but also... Uh, well, no, I think that's all. I think another question from the chat room. Which one of you guy wants to answer this? I'll, I'll take it over to you, Bryce. How will Tom Hanks do with, with the two potential nominations at the Oscars? Um, well, I think he's set in stone for Captain Phillips. Um, I never thought he was going down even before Stag. I don't know why people thought he was a wink link. That final scene pretty much cements a nomination for him, especially since he's Tom Hanks. Saving Mr. Banks is, for me, the biggest shock of the season because I didn't think he'd miss SAG, let alone Globes, let alone Critics' Choice. And, I mean, unless he gets a BAFTA nomination, I mean, he just he just is... I, I can't even say he's completely dead because he's Tom Hanks and the movie is a probable Best Picture nominee. But, I mean, surely support would have shown up somewhere, so... He, he looks to be out, especially in a category that crowded. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. I don't necessarily know if I would say he's 
out completely. I think I do I, have I, I it do. out as far as my nominees. Um, but I think I think he's right on the fence there because, he, as you said, he is Tom Hanks, and I think the support for the movie does seem to be waning a little bit at this point in both the guilds and uh, some of the other critics groups, but I, I think that there's potential for it to show up in BAFTA, and I think... Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he's out necessarily as far as saving Mr. Banks. As far as Captain Phillips, I did think he was waning there too, but uh, I'm much more certain that he's going to be nominated for Captain Phillips now uh, after Globes and SAG and all, or uh, yeah, after all the those groups this week have produced. Yeah, he got all nominee, three. He got Critics Choice, Globes. He got SAG. Uh, all yeah. of us were were uh, underestimating that, but also we have to be careful looking forward to the. Uh, uh, to the Oscars, and remember, this is uh, saving Mr. Banks may be in better shape than we think because yeah. the one thing they that I do like about the Oscar voters is that they're sentimental saps like me, and they uh, oh this God, is a story too. about them and about the making of it, and the, the cynical members of the Broadcast Film Critics Association are less likely to get it. The uh, uh, members of the Golden Globes are less likely to get it. Um, I Early on, not so long ago, about a month ago, Pete Hammond from Deadline Hollywood and I and Steve Pond were all in a little cluster at a party, and we were talking about the possibility that Saving Mr. Banks could actually win. Now, I don't think any three of us believe that now, but the, the early response we were hearing from Academy members themselves in that room where we were standing when this conversation was going on was very real. So the feedback is still there, and this is where it is a challenge to us as prognosticators to... Uh, to, to balance sort yeah. all this out. All right, so so Bryce, uh, your front runners to win the Oscars. Take the take us quickly through the top categories. Um, picture. I'm going with Gravity at the moment. Uh, Yay! Same with, <laughs> with Man. Because right, it's it's got the critical appeal and the populist appeal. And Twelve Years a Slave might be slightly lacking the populist. Appeal, but it makes up for it in importance. So, but I'm still going with Gravity, um, and I haven't seen American Hustle yet. So, I mean, I can't really judge. Best Actor, I say McConaughey. Uh, actress Blanchett. Supporting Actor uh, Leto. Supporting Actress Lupita Nyong'o. Original Screen. Oh, that's never gonna happen. <laughs> come on. What do you mean, come on? Jennifer Lawrence is gonna win twice in a row. Jennifer Lawrence or Oprah will win, yes. Oh, Oprah, 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 <laughs> that damn Oscar. Uh, original screenplay, I'm going with American Hustle and adapted screenplay, 12 Years a Slave. Okay, where is he wrong, Jonathan? Give him some grief here. This is a slugfest after all. Yeah, well, I have to say, uh, I generally agree with him for the most part, um, except for Best Picture, where I am going with 12 Years a Slave. And uh, I know it's kind of, I, pr I probably should, if you look at things like uh, the social network year, the King's Speech, the social network and King's Speech year where the sort of more populist movie, sentimental favorite went out, of, went out over the critics' favorite. But I think that uh, what Bryce said, 12 Years a Slave, does have the importance factor. And while Gravity is my personal favorite from the year, I think I'm going to have to go with at least right now, 12 Years a Slave taking it all, especially after the week it's had where um, it pulled in a lot more uh, recognition from groups like SAG, group, which, which, of course, Gravity wasn't going to get recognition from except for Sandra, but still, groups like SAG, the HFPA, they all sort of really heavily backed 12 Years a Slave, so I'm sticking with it for now. Who wins supporting actors? And, Supporting actress, uh, I have Lupita Nyong'o as well, but uh, Oprah is a close Come second. Come on, for really? Me. Why? <laughs> what am I missing there? I think, for me, it, the reason that I think she's winning is because uh, I think the film is winning Best Picture, and I don't necessarily see Steve McQueen winning director or Chiwetel winning actor. I think they're both uh, sort of second in that group, so I think they're gonna. there has to be some sort of support for it. Uh, obviously, it'll be supported in the technical categories, but I think it's going to win another major award, so I think Lupita's the one to get that. Plus, supporting actress feels like a category that isn't necessarily that strong. You do have 
great performance from her. Oprah, I think, is good, and uh, June Squibb. But I think the potential to win is sort of more tied to Best Picture in that category for me. Now, you have not seen American Hustle, or have you? No, I have not. Okay. But and so Jennifer your, Lawrence your could very well win. But... Yeah, your, your opinions will both change radically when you see that, because that's all <laughs> anybody talks about walking out of that theater. I'm not a TV star in the world now. Yeah. Well, I think it helps not... that she's the superstar because well, of the Hunger Games and stuff, too. So. Right, right. Uh, but I, th- I predict you will both be changing your prediction in that category. I will not. Um, <laughs> whoa! I, I'm going to hold you to that then. Okay. Uh, why? Just because you just you just don't like her? Is that what it is? Well, I, it's not that I don't like Lawrence, and I don't particularly like uh, Nyango in this movie. Um, I just I, I think it's a good consolation prize for when Twelve Years a Slave loses, and. <laughs> mm. uh, if it does, I mean, I'm not convinced or anything. And uh, Lawrence really just won. And from what I hear, it sounds like it's not dissimilar to her Silver Linings performance. So, Yeah, that's what I've heard around, too, is that it's uh, very erratic, just like that performance, which, while I love Silver Linings, I don't know how I'm going to feel about American Hustle. We'll have to wait and see when, it actually, when I actually get to see it this week. Yeah, Haven't you guys ever heard what S- Sally Field said about the Oscar voters? When you like me, you really, really like me. Jason Robart found that out. Tom Hanks found that out. Spencer that Tracy true. found that out. They're not, they are not averse to giving you two in a row when they really, really like you. And she steals this movie in such an, an amazing, over-the-top way that she is what makes the movie so charming. Now, they're all really good, and it's a love. It's a fun, fun movie. But, uh, you know, I was just talking with Tara Khan, uh, who we call Dr. Oscar, and while he had a terrible year last year, I've known Tarek for 24 million years, and he often usually comes out on top with uh, best predictions on the planet, and he won our prediction contest here among experts in the past, and uh, he is absolutely convinced, as is 24 Emmy in our chat room, that Oprah's <laughs> going to win it. So I think that uh, you, we need to be, have an open mind here, so um, and I, I see the compelling argument for either one of them, I just don't get uh, the whole uh, Lupita thing, but I like your argument, Bryce, that they just have to give it something, and I like your argument, yeah. Jonathan, that if it wins Best Picture, it has to get the acting award, because there's usually, of course, one of those doled out with Best Picture. Those are both very yeah. good counterpoints, but I think you'll be convinced otherwise when you see it. Um, we'll any final talk talking points here? <laughs> we, will, we will, of course. <laughs> Jonathan, t- Jonathan, tell me how... How long you've been coming to Gold Derby, and um, yeah, uh, I've, how I mean, you stumbled I've, upon it? Uh, well, uh, I've been sort of personally uh, predicting and playing this sort of game with myself and a couple of friends uh, for about ten years now, and uh, that's I, I found Gold Derby through sites like uh, Awards Daily. Sasha Stone is a person that I follow pretty regularly, and uh, I don't know. I followed her through to Gold Derby, and then I joined. I joined up, I think, last year, and started really. I didn't really do that well last year, but I I tried anyway, and uh, I started really predicting this year. So. And Bryce, uh, how long have you been coming to Gold Derby? Uh. Pretty much the same as him. I started last year, didn't really pay attention to it, and this year I <laughs> got into it. So, yeah. And how did you find us? Uh, oh, uh, I think back when you first came on, I think Sasha Stone had a post. This is back when I read Awards Daily. And, uh, yeah, so that's how I heard about it. Oh, okay, so we're getting... Uh, uh, thank you, Sasha, for... Uh, for pointing such smart people to us here. Um, any final call about the Oscar season? We'll check back with you later as it goes, but here's your big chance now to yell at Hollywood and tell them what you think. <laughs> um, I really think Saving Mr. Banks deserves more than the guilds have been giving it, so that's my note to the Oscars. And they'll probably support it a lot more than the guilds like SAG, but I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> okay. And yourself, Bryce? Okay. I, I have two wishes. One, I want DiCaprio to be nominated and win. Agreed. It's been 
I've been wanting him to win year after year after year, and then they just keep snubbing him because they're jerks. <laughs> and then the other is I really want the Lone Ranger to show up for makeup or visual effects because I thought that movie got a bad rap and it didn't deserve it. Okay. Uh, there was a question in our chat room a while back of what you guys thought about uh, makeup in the Lone Ranger, so we've addressed that too. Thank you very much uh, for for the chat. Thank you for playing Gold Derby. Thanks for being right. And uh, you know we have an ongoing uh, leaderboard as well. So when you uh, go into the little drop down menu from the gold menu bar on the top of our site, it says leaderboards. That main page is the accumulation of all of our auctions over time. So. Hang in there. Keep, keep making predictions and see if you can bump off Paul Sheehan and Daniel Montgomery, our two editors who kind of hog the front right there, front part there. But a lot of regular users are uh, also inching forward. Form leagues. Get your friends to play. That's why we've worked so hard to build this center so that uh, we can learn from you. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, Tom.